So now let's take a look at a, a quick example, divided highway situation, resurfacing, widening to the inside, overlay milling. So this one is project uh, widening to the inside, has some new pavement construction here, new median barrier and everything. On the existing lanes over here, we're just gonna be doing some milling and resurfacing. And our criteria is a one inch minimum overlay and two inches of maximum milling. We also need to correct the cross slopes and limit the side slope grading. We're just gonna focus on the, the milling aspect and creating the adjusted vertical based on our one inch minimum overlay and our two inch maximum milling. Okay, the way we're gonna set this up is we're just gonna kinda take a look at the pavement here in this area just the pavement, we're not worried about the barrier or any of that. We're just gonna focus on the resurfacing portion. You can see here I have a, an example of what that would look like. It's gonna have a, basically a pavement template. Now we're gonna use some of these settings in the dialog box to, um, to make the adjustment. Okay, so let's take a look. So again, working inside my geometry file has my horizontal vertical geometry, has my terrain model attached. Here's my existing ground. The existing ground is controlling my template and my corridor. Again, this corridor is attached to my geometry file. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the tool again. And we're gonna locate our corridor and we're gonna define some overlay settings for this project based on our design criteria. Let's go ahead and select our corridor. We're gonna give this vertical name, one inch minimum overlay, two inch milling. We're just gonna step through the prompts, key in our start and stop stations. I'm gonna set the backbone at zero. Don't want it to raise it up. Space the add additional to it. So we're gonna set the minimum overlay to the one inch minimum overlay. We're gonna use maximum milling. So I'm gonna mill out two inches. We're gonna set that to maximum of two inches. I'll go through the prompt. And then when we get to our left range point, we're gonna select the outside edge of shoulder. And we're gonna select the other edge of pavement near the center line. Okay, so that's gonna define our range of where it's gonna be checking template points in the, against, in the existing ground. My existing ground range is gonna match where the template point range is. We're also gonna have it examine all the cross-section points between there. Okay, so then once we do that, we'll just left click through the prompts. And it's gonna go ahead and do some processing and define the adjusted vertical for us just like we did in the other exercise. Okay, so down in my profile model view, I now have my newly adjusted vertical, one inch minimum overlay, and the two inch milling vertical. You zoom in there, you can take a closer look at it. And again, this is not a uh, civil geometry element, it's just basically a, a line string, a bunch of tangents, a bunch of vertices in it. So it doesn't have vertical curves or any of that. Talk about how we can do that in a little bit. Now let's go ahead and open up our corridor and apply this to our corridor. And before we apply it to our corridor, I wanna take a look at our, our quantities. I'm gonna take a look at the current milling quantity situation based on if we just have this thing following along the existing ground line. Sometimes you need to optimize your quantities or optimize your cost. So in this case, we're following along the existing ground line. I wanna take a look at the, uh, the milling quantities when we're using just the existing ground profile. Let's come over to element component quantities and we can take a look at a bunch of the quantities here and you can see that our milling quantities are there, overlay quantities, there are any. 
all that stuff will show up in this dialog box. We can take a look at the estimated cost for the project based on these various profiles that we assign to our corridors. I'm going to go ahead and change the vertical. Let's go and apply the adjusted vertical, the one inch minimum overlay with a two inch milling. It's going to go ahead and adjust our corridor for us. Should raise it up a little bit. Okay, so you'll see the template raise up a little bit. You also see there's a little bit of a overbuild or leveling that needs to happen because of that adjustment. If we go back and look at some critical areas, maybe take a look at some areas where we have full super or some areas that we need to pay attention to. I'm going to come over here to my first uh, horizontal curve, take a look at how the super is behaving from a cross sectional standpoint. So I could see how the existing milling and the overlay is working there. Uh, move up to the next horizontal curve, take a look at the super there, see how that's working. So looks pretty good so far. I'm going to go back and take a look at my component quantities now and see if I have any reduction in cost on our milling. So looks like the milling went down a little bit. But um, a lot of times when you're doing these types of projects, kind of an iterative process, go in and make some adjustments here and there to um, optimize your cost. Okay, so that's how you can utilize this on a more, I guess, advanced example, although it's not super advanced, but it's a little bit more complicated because it is a divided highway and there's some other interesting things involved. Now the next question that comes up quite a bit, and I got this question um, in the last session, someone was asking about how do I get a smooth vertical? Because right now all this tool does is created a segmented, corded type of profile. It's got a bunch of vertices in it. It's basically just a tangent, a bunch of the tangents, you know, based on the corridor template drop interval, right? And that might be fine. You know, some people are good with that for, for resurfacing projects. You can just use what's out there, that's good. Um, but what if you need to do a smooth or a best fit profile? So what are our options for that? Well, inside Open Roads Designer, we have a couple tools here that can help with that. We have the best fit profile tool, and we have a tool called Define Profile by Best Fit. And I'll show you that one later. So let's take a look at the best fit profile. And this is a newer tool, not too sure how many people are aware of this one, but this one actually lives underneath the site tab on the ribbon. So if you navigate over to the site tab, you go to grading, and you look under the profiles, you'll see there's a tool called Best Fit Profile. This does is it creates a best fit vertical alignment based on your user defined excuse me, based on your user-defined settings. So basically we'll create a, it'll do a regression analysis on the element that you select in the profile model view, and it'll create a complex vertical alignment so it'll actually have the tangents and vertical curves and everything. It does a pretty good job. So take a look at this, how we how we could use this. So here again, I'm working in the same project. I'm back inside of my geometry file. I go locate my tool. You can see under the site tab, best fit profile. Now you can enter some design values in there. So you can enter your K, K value, your minimum tangent and all that. I'm just going to run it without um, entering any values. I'm just going to try and have it match exactly what's there as best it can. It's going to go through form some analysis on the on that data, on that profile. You can see it shows you the number of VPIs that it calculated. And once it's done, you just simply close it. And then what, what you end up with is a nice smoothed out vertical that's true civil geometry. So if you go and select it, you'll see that it's just like if you created a complex vertical alignment, okay? When you select it, it's going to show you all the K values. It's also going to show you all the PVI 
elevation and elevations as well. And then when you zoom out, you, you'll be able to see the dynamic text and all the graphical manipulators. So if you do need to make adjustments, once again, it behaves just like any other civil geometry element. You can make adjustments just by grabbing the drag handles or entering in um, different text in the dynamic text fields. Another way you can make some edits to it as well is just go over to the table editor, select the geometry, load it up into the table, table editor, and you can further make some edits to the profile. Now, another nice thing about this is that you can utilize this for applications such as trying to come up with a best fit profile of existing ground. Let's take a look at this example next. So now let's say we have a scenario where we have an existing ground profile. And let's just forget about vertical overlay adjustments for now. Let's just talk about, let's try and match this existing ground profile as best we can. So you can use this tool to do that as well. So let's take a look. We can also use it to set some design standards on this so we make sure that we're meeting our proper design speed and K values. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna launch the tool once again. Instead of selecting some proposed vertical geometry, I'm gonna go ahead and select my existing ground profile from my terrain model. I'll let it go through and calculate the number of PIs. Let it do its thing. And when it's done, it's going to plot the new vertical into our profile model view. Okay, so it looks like it came up with about 16 BPIs. We go ahead and close that. And you can see it matched the existing ground pretty well for the most part. Now, if we need to make some adjustments to put in some more um, concrete vertical curve values, we can do that. If we need to make some graphical adjustments, we can just grab the drag handles and make some adjustments. And again, we can go back to our table editor and review the data there as well. Now, there may be times where you want to make sure this adheres to some design standards. So if you toggle on the design standard toggle bar, we're going to set a design standard on here. So our project has a 70 mile an hour design speed. So I'm going to set that up and find 70 mile an hour design speed on that vertical. Now, when we go back to our table editor, it's going to show us all the areas where it's below 70 miles an hour where it's not going to work, where we're going to have some issues. So all those areas in red that you see there, that would be areas where we're going to have to adjust the vertical based on the uh, design speed requirements. So very useful for applications for something like this. So keep that in mind if you need to do something like this on your project. The best fit profile hiding over in the, the site tab. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.